Good morning. Good morning and welcome. This is Mr. B's Sunday School. I am Mr. B, also known as Bruce Ehrlich, and today we're here to consider the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, and we're just looking at verses 9 to 14 today. Uh, we've got a couple little backup readings to help us out with that. Get on the right page here. Um, today, Jesus is going to compare and contrast those who trust in their own righteousness and good deeds to those who place their trust in God alone and the way of salvation that God has provided. First thing we like to do in this class, though, is pray. Thank you, Father in heaven above, that you have always provided a way of salvation for those who will put their trust in you. Bless now the reading of your word, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, with me today, is this little scale. And we're calling it the scale of justice. Now, many people, if you were to ask them why God should let them into heaven, will talk to you about how they are not as bad as some people, or they might give you a list of some of the good things that they do. And that's all good and fine. At least the part about not doing really bad things and doing some good things. However, here's where they, me, I, and we, all of us, get into big trouble. Are we trusting that our refusal to do really bad things and our deliberate and faithful doing of good things will get us into heaven? Are we comparing how good we are to how bad some other people are? Do some people make us angry or disgusted by all the bad things that they do? Let's find out what Jesus has to say about all of this in today's reading. And as I said before, we're looking at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, and verses 9 through 14. And we're going to start out with the English Standard Version. This is Jesus speaking. He says, he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector standing afar off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, 
but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Okay, now we got a quote for you from Corey, or what's her real name is Cornelia Arnolda Johanna, and she goes by Corey Ten Boom. Now she was a watchmaker, an author, and a public speaker. And the quote that we're using today is, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Now, Corey, along with her father, Casper, and her sister, Betsy, and other family members, helped many Jewish people escape from the Nazis during the Holocaust in World War II by hiding them in their home. However, Corey and her father and sister were eventually caught and arrested. Corey and her sister Betsy were sent to the Ravensbrück concentration camp. Corey later wrote a book about her experiences named The Hiding, or titled The Hiding Place. I got a reading for you from the Gospel of Matthew, and we're at chapter 6. And we're just going to read verses 5 through 8. And Jesus is teaching here. Uh, Jesus says, Also, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray publicly, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, so that they may be seen by men. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, they already have their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your most private room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you have need of before you ask him. Okay. Oh, I have a little note for you. And the little note says, The only reward the hypocrites will ever receive is to be honored by men. Okay, there you go. Now, <clears throat> it's a sad fact that whenever I start comparing what I do to what other people do, I might start feeling pretty good about who I am. And I might start to think poorly about others. After all, no matter how bad we are, we can usually think of someone who we think is worse than us. So, if we can't trust our own goodness to get us into heaven, who can we trust? We remember that Jesus said to the, that the tax collector was justified. And that's a good thing. So let's take a look at what it means to be justified and then find out how the tax collector received that justification. A biblical definition of the word justified is the act by which God moves a willing person from the state of sin or injustice to the state of grace, justice. Uh, or the change in a person's condition moving from a state of sin to a state of righteousness. Now, to find out how this all happens, 
How someone like me or a wicked tax collector could ever be justified by God? Let's take a closer look at the words Jesus uses in this parable and find out what they mean. In the prayer of the repentant tax collector, again, uh, we're going to read Luke chapter 18, verses, verse 13, and this time from the New Living Translation. And it says, But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. Okay. So, the words here translated, be merciful, are actually one Greek word. And this is a very important word. The word is, Hilaskomahi, and it's spelled H-I-L-A-S-K-O-M-A-I, if you want to look it up. It appears only in the New Testament in Luke chapter 18, 13, which we just read, and in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. Here, in Luke 18, 13, it is translated as be merciful. However, in Hebrews 2.17, it is translated as either atonement, sacrifice, or propitiation for our sins, depending on your translation. So, what's going on here? What does the word hilaskomeahi really mean when the tax collector asks God, the Father, to be merciful to him. The tax collector, when he requests that God be merciful to him, is asking that God look at and consider the atoning sacrifice made for sins. The tax collector is identifying himself with the blood sacrifice and requesting that God consider the sacrifice in dealing with his own sins. Okay, we got a little class note for you. The only way we can come to God is on the basis of his atoning sacrifice. Got a little reading from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. We're in the New Living Translation, and we're just going to read verses 21 through 23. This is Jesus speaking. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On Judgment Day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me. Get away from me. You who break God's laws. All right. Here we have a group of people at the judgment seat of Christ presenting a list of all the really good, good deeds they have done and in his name. Is that going to work? What does Jesus say? Okay, we got a reading from the New International Version. We're at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. And it says, and this is uh, 
how do we do this? This is Paul speaking about God the Father and Jesus, God the Son. And what it says is, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, we know from Isaiah 6, chapter 64, verse 6, that all of our righteousness, all of our good works, are like filthy rags in God's sight. Should we insult God by asking him to accept the filthy rags of our righteousness as the basis for our salvation? Again, what does Jesus say? Why would God accept what I have done rather than the work that Jesus has done for me? A little bit of a class roundup for you. God has provided an atonement, a sacrifice, a propitiation for our sins. In the Old Testament, the blood of animals was sprinkled on the mercy seat. However, at the fullness of time, Jesus offered himself, the perfect Lamb of God, as the sacrifice once and for all. When we look at the atonement that God has promised, or sorry, that God has provided when we accept it and identify with it as the perfect sacrifice to cover all of our sins, God can justify us. He can make us holy and righteous in his sight. God does not allow sin in heaven. God does not allow anyone who is not perfect as he is perfect in heaven. Remember our parable as spoken by Jesus today. The one man came to God presenting his own righteousness while the other came begging that God in his mercy, would recognize the atonement made by blood and forgive him for his sins. Let us recognize the atonement God made for us. Let us trust God and not ourselves or our works. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness and providing a way, providing a sacrifice, an atonement, and a propitiation, a way to take away our sins. Pray that you'd bless us with wisdom, help us to accept what you have provided, the perfect sacrifice. Bless the reading of your word to each of us, I pray, for this week, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Have a great week.